Here at Paddy Power, we're the home of the Money Back Special, with some incredible offers every single week. Check out the website or app today. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus, begumbleaware.org. Hello and welcome to this Epsom Derby Festival anti-postcast. I'm Maddie Plow, joined in the studio by Nick Watts. We have Tom Siegel and Darren Hughes from Paddy Power joining us as well. Um, good morning, gents. First up then the Derby, our first port of call. Let's just have a bit of a chat to ease us into things. What's he? In terms of quality, I think last year was pretty high, wasn't it? What do we think at this stage? Do you think it's going to be a good Derby, mediocre Derby, bad Derby? It's hard to say at this stage. I think a lot, uh, or, or some something at least, will hinge on what happens in the Dante this week. I think that's going to be... A lot will, won't it? Yeah, I'm really looking forward to that race. Obviously, uh, we've got the two darn hot angle uh, coming back, Mr Guineas, but we know what he did as a two-year-old looked fantastic. Um, you know, still loads and loads of people who say he won't stay. Um, you know, be better off at a mile, look very quick when he won the Dewhurst. Um, but then on the other side, he, he comes from a family who, you know, suggests he will stay middle distance. It's a massive conundrum. So I think the Dante will, will play a huge role in sifting things out. If he was to go and win really nicely, as, as I very much hope he does, mm. then that brings a huge class element into, into the equation and a nice kind of contrast to the uh, Aidan O'Brien domination that we've had so far. A really good new mm. angle into the race, particularly if he takes on Japan and beats him. Yeah, indeed. I know Tom's a big fan of two down hot. He is just a really classy horse, isn't he? But Darren, we'll go over to you next. I mean, how do you rank this year's middle distance three-year-olds? Hard to say uh, at, at this stage, because we, ha we haven't probably seen enough of them. Um, I have serious doubts about the Chester trial last week. Look, we'll touch on that later on. But um, from what I've seen so far, I'd be disappointed if we saw the winner. I'd put it that way. Okay, Okay. nice. And uh, Tom, what's your approach with the derby? Have you had sort of lots of anti-post bets already or keeping your powder dry? I've had a couple. I've had a couple, that's for sure. I've backed, well, we'll get on to what I've backed later on. But uh, I think the point, what C and sort of Darren were touching on there, we got to hope something comes out of the Dante because so far the British trained three-year-old Colts have been embarrassing. They've mm. been so weak, it's untrue. I mean, Aidan O'Brien had... First two in both Chester trials, didn't he? He won the Epsom trial, he won the Lingfield trial, and we have got nothing. Yeah. Unless something comes out of the Dante, it's going to be which one of Aiden's seventh string. You know, he'll have ten yeah. in the race. And we, you know, you Charlie get the Appleby impression said it the other day, didn't he? He said it was boring. And it's not boring if you're, if, if, because they're good horses. We all want to see good horses. But there's got to be competition, and we've got to hope something comes out of the Dante. Otherwise, it'll, if Japan wins the Dante, oh, my God. Mm. I get the feeling that, I mean, we'll get on to Japan and the rest in more detail in just a sec, but I get the feeling, as is often the case, Aidan O'Brien, he doesn't really know which is the best of his. Um, maybe it will be Japan. Let's move on to the, the full preview now, Darren. Uh, just take us through the betting. Yeah, sure thing. So uh, another one of Aidan's is actually our 10-3 to favourite in the shape of Sir Dragonette. Two Darren Hatt is 9-2. to two. Anthony Van Dyke is 5s. Broom is 6s. Japan at 7s. Dubai Warriors 14s. Lionel Judy is 14s. Mad Moon is 14th and it is 16th bar. Thanks very much. Let's start off with Sir Dragonet then. Um, Aidan O'Brien, you know, he likes running his horses around Chester to get that bit of experience. He had just his second, that was his second ever start. Ruler of the World was the last horse to do that double uh, in winning at Chester in the Vars and then winning uh, the Derby in 2013. Do you have any question marks about him, Watsy? Because I really, really liked him, but, I mean, he's still a very inexperienced horse, isn't he? Yeah, very inexperienced. He, he's kind of, uh, well, he certainly blindsided me a little bit because he obviously didn't make his debut until this year and he was 14 to 1 when winning at Tipperary on his debut. So it's not like um, the odds makers, certainly when he was turning up there, imagined that it'd be anything particularly special. But of course, he won that very nicely, went on to Chester. Um, and it's just the point, where, I mean, we'll talk about Aidan O'Brien Lowe's today and it, because he's got so many horses in with a chance. but. They're so well bred all of his string and it's open to any of them at any stage of the season to suddenly sprout and to come forward and leave what they've done behind and take up just a huge leap um, because they're all fantastically bred animals, you know, lovely lines, lovely dam lines and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so Dragonet is a classic case uh, related to their Oak second of a few years ago, Wonder of Wonders. Um, and he's just one that, you know, like I said, just took a massive leap forward at Chester. Um, whether there's a touch of too good to be trues about it, um, there might well be. I thought Norway 
going into that race, um, he was a very solid yardstick. He won the Zetland Stakes last year, which is a, it's a race that's become quite important to Paddy Dawd in, in recent seasons. Wings of Eagles came from there. Kew Gardens came from there last year. He won that. I don't think he would have been at all suited by um, the soft ground at Chester. Mm. Um, so I think that accentuated the, the winning margin of Sir Dragonet. Um, needs to be supplemented, of course. I, I don't know if they if they will supplement him or not. Um, you, you could yeah. you could take it either way. You could say, well, why wouldn't you after winning like that? But you know, obviously they've got so many options to sift through. Still a lot of you know, still got Dante to come. So you know, if Japan comes and hoses up in a Dante and beats two darn hot, maybe they'll just go with him and a few others, and and maybe Sir Dragonette might go elsewhere. Um, you don't know. It's, it's it's very difficult. But immediately impressed after the race, but. On reflection, having looked at, looked at it again since, you know, obviously the soft ground being against Norway, I think might have accentuated his winning margin. Okay, Tom, would it first off, would it worry you um, looking at a derby for a horse who didn't run at two? No, not at all. No, not at all. We've had a few of them, haven't we? Commander in chief, Ferrer of the world. You mentioned them. Uh, thing about Sir Jack, I hate the way he moves. Absolutely hate the way he moves. He doesn't move like a good horse. That's my issue with him. I've watched Derby. I thought Donica was key to him the other day. I thought he gave him a brilliant ride. Sort of ah, just look, dropping him out and letting him find he, his feet. I don't think then. he had any choice. I, don't, I mean, look, it was 14 to 1 for a Tipperary maid, and they don't think he, they never thought he was very good. He's completely surprised everyone. I just don't like the way I've been watching Derby winners since 1976. I've never seen one move like that. Now, that doesn't count him out. What, what do you mean by that? He's very short. He's very choppy. He doesn't, it just doesn't look like it. He doesn't, just doesn't move. He doesn't stride out. To me, like a classy horse. I think if you look, if you watch racing very closely, all horse, all really good horses tend to move the same way or in a similar way. Mm. He doesn't. That doesn't count him out from being a brilliant horse. He might be. He might be a freak of nature. You look at horses like attraction. I mean, she moved <laughs> dreadfully, well, didn't she? Exactly. There's a, there's a few around that, you know, obviously people, horses can uh, be different. They can, mm. you know, buck the trend, but... You know, you're talking about a horse that's run twice on soft ground. What happens if it's faster, Epsom? It's just, look, that's just too much against him for me. I agree with Watsi. I'm not even certain they'll, uh, you know, if Japan was mm. to come out and win the Dante, I'm not even certain they'll, they'll uh, supplement him in. I don't, don't, why? Why would they need to? They've got mm. the next seven in the market. They might as well go and win something else with him. And they obviously didn't rate him at the start of the season. He's obviously completely surprised them. For me, I couldn't back him at three to one. Not the way that, not the way he moves, no. Okay, Darren, at the top of the show, sound, sounded like you'd be in agreement with Tom there. Yeah, I wouldn't be mad keen on this lad now, to be honest with you. Um, like on the face, it looked he probably has to be favoured just because he's after winning a trial fairly impressively. But he was scrubbed along out the back the whole way um, along that race. Like when you see Dash and Willoughby had all of these in trouble, like he, he went very short in the run, maybe two and a half, three furlongs out. And that to me just suggests that this was not an up to scratch trial. I'd agree with Nick. Norway probably didn't handle the ground the way it was. Um, and I'd say Sir Dragonet is a. Um, I think he benefited from circumstance more so than actually being a top class horse himself. Uh, more than happy to leave him alone at 10 to 3 or 3 to 1, whatever he is there. Mm. Uh, could see him maybe going to a ledger or something later on in the year and running reasonably well, but it wouldn't be for me now for the for the uh, the showpiece of it all. Like he, I don't think he's a derby horse in my book. Maddie, can I just point out that you can't deny that he's a very good horse to time the figures. Everything about him, the okay. way he finished, suggests that he is a very good horse. We just talked, this is a derby preview. Talking about price, aren't yeah, we? Yeah, it's a derby preview as well. Is he is he going to be suited to the Epsom? That's my negative about him. Mm. And for that reason, you know, I have no problem winning the French derby, the Irish derby, whatever he likes. But it's a different kettle of fish around Epsom, especially if the ground's quick. And I think, I think that would be against him. It is indeed. I think they're, they're very fair comments from you all. Just quite a lot of negativity, but that's the way it goes. Uh, let's move on to his stable mate now, considering we've given him so much attention already at uh, Japan. He's going to run in the Dante against Too Darn Hot. Now, I have a few concerns about him, actually, because he was never Ballydor's first string last season. He seemed to be about their third string. And Aidan O'Brien, I don't know if you'll have any sort of comeback to this, Tom, but he never seems to run his proper derby hopes in the, in the Dante. Do you think there's been a, a problem with him, a hold-up, or it's just the way it's happened to play out? No, he's definitely had a hold-up. Yeah, he's definitely had an issue. That's why they're waiting for here. Uh, it's the last recognised trial. Uh, they've I, Aidan's on record of saying he missed a few weeks' work and he's going to be short. Uh, if he wins this, I'd be very surprised. I mean, this is this is a proper trial. You've got everything in here, including horses mm. that aren't even a Telecaster, and you know Roger Varians was well backed yesterday. You know, you've got a pro this is a, this is a totally different kettle of fish trial to it's the exciting, ones. Exciting, isn't it? Yeah, to the ones we've had so far. I mean, if Japan wins this off a interrupted preparation, then then he'll win the Derby. Simple as that. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't see him winning this. I, I, I think, I think he's got a lot to prove. You now. 
long time till you know, there's a few weeks till the derby, things can change, but judging by Aiden's comments, I think I think they're not expecting him to be anywhere near Cherry Ripe for the Dante. Uh I think you know, no point backing him now because because I expect him to get beaten on Wednesday or Thursday. Yeah, I wouldn't necessarily disagree with that. What's he got anything to add? What do you think on Japan? I I'd, I'd, I'd completely agree with Tom. Um I'm sure we'll come on to the Dante in more depth and I'm, you know, as I stated earlier, I really hope that Two Darn Hot uh, wins that nicely and, and can provide a different dimension to the race other than Aidan O'Brien. Um, Tom's exactly right, he did, Japan has had some kind of hold up so you wouldn't imagine he'd be cherry ripe, particularly the way that Aidan trains them um, because the long season's ahead of them all so he won't be 100%. So um, for those reasons, uh, you know, again, it might even be a bit of a rush getting him to Epsom if he didn't win on on if he didn't win the Dante and didn't show sufficient uh, ability to to go to Epsom, they might just hold him back and keep him for a bit later in the season. Mm. Yeah, indeed, uh, Darren Japan. I mean, I was saying earlier that he never seemed to be their sort of first string last year. What did you make of him as a two-year-old going forward? Uh, you're talking to one of the founder members of the Japan fan club. Ah, brilliant. Uh, this is what we absolutely like. Absolutely love him. Myself and one of the other lads at work have been back in this lad all winter. Um, absolutely in love with him. Fell in love with him last year when he won his maiden at Killarney. Uh, looked him bother. Really tight turning track. It's a horrible track and he just picked up and went and won. Loved the way he went about the winning the bears for it. Like even Shami Heffernan couldn't get him beaten that day as much and all as he tried. Um, I, I just I am concerned though I really am because he was entered in the race and post trophy last um, last autumn and then they ended, they ended up supplementing Magna Grecia and Japan was taken out without any explanation so I am actually wondering have his hold ups or his problems have they extended back as far as that mm. um, the fact that we haven't seen him I, yeah, I know where you're coming from saying he wasn't the first string but that, that wouldn't put me off so much it seems um, to be less relevant these days with horses like Wings of Eagles winning the winning the Derby a couple of years ago. It, it doesn't seem to matter too much, does it? No, no. Look, because uh, look, as Nick alluded to there, they're all so well bred and they're all so good that like on any given day, any one of them could come out on top. So I, yeah, that that'd be my take on that. I am extremely concerned that we haven't seen him. Like I couldn't I couldn't possibly recommend a bet him at the price he is. And I do actually agree with Tom. I think he will get beaten this week as well and probably go to a bigger price. I'd be hoping he could finish second to Darren Hot this week and run respectably, uh, leaving well well in to run well at Epsom, but I wouldn't be madly confident now at this stage. Mm, OK, interesting. I, I really liked Japan last year, but I seem to have sort of soured on him over time. Who knows what he'll do uh, this week. Let's talk about two darn hot now then. Uh, Tom, he's your main sort of pick for the race. Easy to see why with what he achieved last year. He's still unbeaten, let's not forget. And um, he's from a great family, albeit a fragile one. What are you expecting at York? What, what do you think is going to happen? Uh, you say he's my main pick, and he was when I did it a few weeks ago for the paper, Maddie. Yes, he certainly was at six or seven to one or whatever he was. Just simply, he had the best form. He was the best two-year-old. Everything's changed. Obviously, we've had all the trials since then. Mm. So, so you know, whether he's a good whatever price he is now, but I, I don't know. But okay. uh, at the time, I thought he was the standout horse. He looked like Johnny Gosden was playing his, playing his games again and sort of getting him ready for the derby, thinking he was a derby horse rather than a, than a guineas horse, I don't know. But uh, I wouldn't be worried too much about his missing the guineas. It all depends on the Dante, does it? If he's the horse he was last year, I think he was miles better than anything that we've seen run this year or last, myself. Magna Trip Greece. wise do you think he'll improve for it? I don't know. I mean, the, 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 the stats guys and the time guys say it's very, de very debatable whether he'll get a mile and a half. I don't know. Uh, that's that's up, out there, for, you know. I expect him to stay 10 furlongs really well. Whether he stays a derby, he could easily be a roaring lion. Mm. He could easily be a roaring lion. He could easily win the Dante and then not stay the derby trip. That's very possible. Uh, the only, Why he was my main selection at the time, because I thought he was the best horse. Yeah. And when you get the best horse at six or seven to one, you know, let's, let's say if he goes and wins the Dante by two lengths, he'll be four to five, won't he? Or five yeah. to four. That's what will happen. And that's why I thought he was a potentially a good bet at that time, because mm. the price dictated that he was the one horse that could start a very short price. None of the others could. You mm. see, Sir Dragonets, no one heard of him before last week, and now he's three to one. Well, if Too Darn Hot did what he did, he'd be, he'd be five to four for even money, wouldn't he? So that was, mm. the re that was the reasoning behind selecting him. Do I think he's a certain stayer? I, I don't know. I yeah. really don't know, but I think he's a very, very, very good horse. Yeah, interesting. They had uh, Sir Dragonet in the Triumph Hurdle Market, which I find quite funny, apparently. <laughs> anyway, uh, to Don Hart, what's he? Would you have any worries about the track at Epsom for him? We've mentioned he's from a fragile family. Some people mm. didn't think he sort of handled the dip at Newmarket very well. Would that be a concern for you? 
It wouldn't be a massive concern to me, no more than any other horse. You know, they're all, you know, unless you ran in that blue ribbon trial at Epsom a few weeks ago, you're all going there not having, uh, not having been to the track before. So, you know, it's, it's, it is a unique track and it's, it's, it's very odd configuration. So it's, it's, it's another test. Do you test. read much into those that go to the breakfast with the stars? Are you encouraged if someone chooses to go there? Or? No, it's not a negative, I don't think. If, some, if a horse goes there and shows that he, you know, he handles the bend well and, and comes home nicely and, you know, it's certainly not a negative. But no, it wouldn't put me off. And, you know, I, I, the breeding angle doesn't put me off with two Don Hot as well. I think if you just looked at his breeding and didn't look at his races, you'd say he's a definite stayer because he's a son of a horse who won the Shima Classic and the Yorkshire Oaks. Um, so you'd say, well, why wouldn't he stay? Um, and they started, on, started him off over a mile at two. Now, normally horses do when they're maiden over a mile at two. They go on, you know, and excel over longer trips. Um, I think what put it in people's minds that he might not be a true stayer is the way he won the Dewhurst, where he kind of looked to be struggling uh, through the race a little bit, couldn't quite get a good position. But when Frankie pulled him out, he just uh, he just whizzed by everything, including Anthony Van Dyke, who was well held in third that yeah. day, who obviously won at the weekend um, and won very very nicely indeed. Um, I'm sure they would have liked to have gone to the Guineas and and and, and got to that race, but. Um, they didn't make it, but I'm just really pleased that they've decided to go for the Dante, which suggests they, they're looking at a Derby route for him rather than going to the Irish 2000 Guinness and keeping him at a mile. Mm. I think he's definitely worth uh, trying over these trips. They did it with Roaring Lion last year. In, in, in my view, um, Roaring Lion was much less likely a stayer than uh, Too Darn Hot would be. And yeah. he managed to finish third in the Derby. So I don't think there's any reason not to go for it. Obviously, notwithstanding uh, Thursday's race, where I really hope um, I'm repeating myself here, but I really hope he does the business and, yeah. uh, and you know, uh, gives us a massive and a good talking point going into Epsom. Yeah, we need a superstar, don't we? That would be good to see. Uh, Darren, what's your thoughts on Too Darn Hot? He seems a little bit like Marmite for a lot of people. Uh, I'll clarify my statements by saying I'd be shocked if he isn't the most talented horse amongst all of these. I do think, in terms of raw talent, he's the best of the lot. I just think it's a bit unsatisfactory. Like, all winter, all we've heard is that this lad cannot get a mile and a half. He will not be aimed at a mile and a half. He's too quick. He's too this. He's too that. Then all of a sudden, right, he misses the guineas. Fair enough. Why not go for the Irish guineas? Do you know what I mean? Why all of a sudden is he a definite mile and a half horse? And I'm not saying he won't get the trip. And to be honest with you, at 9-2, to two, bear in mind, he was 11-10 to 10 for the guineas, right? And he's 9-2 to for the derby. I don't think the derby field is that much stronger than the guineas field was mm. and he's over four times the price so you're effectively getting nine to two whether or not he stays a mile and a half to me that's a very fair price am i looking do i think he'll definitely stay he just he looks too quick it doesn't make sense if he stays like if he does stay with the speed that he has you're looking at potentially the greatest source of all time because it doesn't make sense with how quick he is that he should get a mile and a half and um, i'll be watching with interest with this lad I, I i probably won't back him at the price he is but I, I definitely wouldn't put anyone off taking the 92 there because I think it is fair enough. Okay, that's really interesting. Uh, let's keep on going down the list then. Broom, uh, the Derrens Town winner, he looks really straightforward, doesn't he? Seems to stay really strongly. What would you think of him? Well, he's another case in point for me of a Bally Doll horse that, you know, didn't look amazing at two. I think mm. he came over for the Acom and he's only six in that race. Um, got beaten a couple of times as well, but obviously he's taken a massive leap forward over the winter. He's, he's kind of gone uh, the route that traditionally in the olden days Aidan O'Brien used for the likes of Galileo, where he's gone mm. Ballysax, uh, Derrinstown, he's come through that uh, very nicely. So, yeah, he's definitely somewhere in the mix. He looks a lazy horse, he just does enough, um, but he finds plenty when you ask him. Uh, they're always a good type to have on your side, I think. Um, but if we're talking about Broome, um, we might get to Mad Moon in a minute, but I'd still be interested in him if they decided to go for a derby trip. Again, there's stamina queries about him, but he got... Um, he shapes he as if he needs a trip, doesn't he? Shapes it? as though he needs further. He beat Broome a couple of lengths in, in a group two at Leopardstown on, on their Irish uh, Champions weekend, which was a fantastic, really good performance. Looks even better now. Didn't run badly at all in the Guinness. Uh, finished fourth. Maybe he was on the wrong side. I'm not sure there was a huge differential um, in terms of you know the draw bias and all that kind of stuff if there was one but it was still a, a, a more than worthy effort and mm. like you said I think he does shape like a horse that wants a bit further so based on his performances at two based on his encouraging performances so far this season I don't think he's one to count out at all and again he prov if he does run and I hope he does he provides another contrast to the Aidan O'Brien team it gives us another yeah. element to it which is, is good yeah Indeed. Uh, Darren, I'll go over to you next. I mean, Mad Moon, Broom, where, where do they sort of fit in your pecking order? 
Yeah, I fully come down to the same side as Nick there in terms of the Broom Mad Moon discrepancy in price. Like Mad Moon fairly had his measure last year, um, as as a two year old, and he's over twice the price now. Like fair enough, Broom has come out and has ran extremely well twice this year. You know, he obviously won at the weekend. But Mad Moon doesn't look like he, it's not that he hasn't trained on. He looks like he actually needs to step up and trip. Like mm. I was in Punchestown for the watching the Guineas in, in, in a, on the big screen down there, and I remember being absolutely delighted with Mad Moon at the time. Like I, Matt Sarr was third in the Guineas uh, last year, wasn't he? So exactly that that's that, that's the thing. Do you know what I mean? Like, it, it, he, for me, the way I summed up the race afterwards was he ran the perfect Derby trial in the Guineas. Like I know Tom reckons there was no um, no bias on the day at Newmarket, and. Then, I'm loads fall out with him, and <laughs> I would, with Tom, that is. I don't want an, another argument, but uh, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be quite so certain that that's the case. Like it, it may well. I think Mad Moon probably would have won anyway. But if there was a wrong side to be on, Mad Moon was on it. If okay. there was a wrong. Side. Go on, then, uh, Tom. And, oh, sorry. Yeah, carry on. Go on. No, no, for, no. I'm, I'm pretty much finished. Like I just think the step up trip to suit Mad Moon perfectly. He's a small, compact horse. Can't see him being too put off by the cameras of Epsom, uh, and at the price. Smash and bed, I think, at 14s. Yeah, OK. So, uh, Darren clearly takes Mad Moon over Broom. Would you agree, Tom? Uh, no, not really. I'm not sure Mad Moon's going to stay myself. I've, I've done all the work on the guineas many times. He, he ran one of the fastest furlongs in the guineas. He doesn't strike me as a horse that going to really relish a mile and a half. I don't know. I didn't like him coming down the dip either. I thought that's where he lost his race, really. As for the, mm. the draw advantage, I, I never said there was... I mean, obviously, the way it turned out... It paid to be drawn high, of course it did, but that was nothing to do with the track or anything. It's just that the the way the race turned out, the ones on the far side never could quicken with the ones on the near side. It was yeah. simple as that. You know. it, was it more a pace bias than a draw bias? A I little think. bit, a little bit, but at halfway they were level. You know, there was never there was nothing in between them at level. That's what the sectionals tell you. They were level. Uh, so Shine So Bright was slightly in front of Emirati Annie, but only slightly. There was nothing between. You know, Magna Grecia ran faster than. Uh, all those on the far side for the first five furlongs and faster for the last three furlongs. So to me, it didn't doesn't stack up that there was a massive bias. It just stacked up that the best horse won. Okay. Simple as that. But let, that, that's irrelevant. As for Mad Moon, no, I think Broom's a better stayer probably. I don't think he's quite good enough. You watch the Leopardstown Likes race. Likes a bit of wow factor. A little it? bit. I mean, he's, he's, he's sort of one of those that you could see finishing third or fourth and then being a, a, a ledger horse myself. I mean, if you watch the trial on Saturday, I mean, you couldn't have asked for a better race. They're sort of parting of the Red Sea up the inside. Never happens at Leopardstown, does it? They all have, if you're stuck out the back at Leopardstown, you end up losing because you have to go mm -hmm. right around the outside. Well, he never had to go around a horse until they straightened up and then he had to go around the, his two stable mates. Do I think he's a derby winner? No, I don't. Do I think he's a very solid potential ledger horse yes i do yeah I think no, nothing more to say about him well we could talk about the derby for hours couldn't we um but let's just i'll run through a few more line of duty the breeders cup winner he's going to run in the dante anthony van dyke we've given him a quick mention uh, bangkok won at sundown and circus maximus who won at chester as well who else do we want to discuss um quickly before we get your best bets uh what's your to first um, well, line of duty would be quite interesting, definitely. Uh, again, he's, he's booked in for the for the Dante on Thursday. We're going to learn so much from that. But again, he was an improving two-year-old. You, you, you know, he actually uh, beat uh, Pablo Escobar last season to get off the mark at Goodwood, I think it was. And Pablo Escobar was second in the uh, Lingford race on Saturday behind Anthony Van Dyke. But I'm sure uh, line of duty has improved a lot, a lot since then. You wouldn't rule him out. If you wanted one at a mad price, then I've mentioned him already. If he went for the race, Norway, I think, would leave his, his running behind Dragonet a long way behind on quicker ground. Of course, he's a brother to ruler of the world. Um, you know, again, he's, he's one of these Aiden O'Brien ledger types who could well be placed in the derby and then go on later in the season and excel over further. Yeah, yeah, I um, definitely agree with you on that one. I can see that happening. Uh, Tom, many others at big prices? Well, you sort of skipped over Anti Van Dyke, I, I think. Judging by Darren's prices there, I think the Paddy Power boys will agree with me here. I thought he was the most the most likely Derby winner of the Aidan O'Brien ones I've seen so far. Personally, I thought he was really good on at Lingfield on Saturday. Proved he stayed, didn't he? Yeah, that was my worry about him. I don't think it was a great race. I mean, the second was rated 97. It was beaten in a handicap the time before. But I think, as Aidan said, he'd had a problem. They weren't expecting much. He drifted. You know, he was quite a big drifter on the day. I think they were expecting him to improve massively for the run. And I love the way he sort of picked up again close home and changed his legs and went forward again uh, in the final furlong. I think he's going to run really well in the derby. Looks like a handy horse that will suit suited by Epsom. So he's definitely on the radar. What's he mentioned, line of duty there. His form just keeps getting better. You know, when he was beaten in the maiden, he was beaten by great Scott, who turned out to be a good horse, you know. And then he went and beat Pablo Escobar. Then he won his grade two in... 
France with a grade one winner behind. And then he went to America and was, you know, he was really impressive. He was really strong at the line. Uh, he'll definitely stay a mile and a half. Uh, well, it's a tricky one backing him now, though, isn't he? Because he's got to run in this. Is this there a bit dante. of problem with him? Is that why he's not no, run? Or no, just no, he's been abs- like no, to keep him absolutely quite fresh, fine. Yeah, they? Charlie Appleby reckons he needs to go around a bend. He needs trouble. He needs to get in sort of that's that's sort of his style. He's sort quite of a like gritty that. fighter. Yeah, mm. absolutely. That's great for Epsom. Uh, he reminds me a bit of what's he? What was the name of the Godolphin horse that won it from miles back one year, years ago? Can't remember. Can't remember. <laughs> Alex Scott used to train him as a two-year-old, and he sort of caused a big surprise on the day. He was just sort of a tough street fighter. Oh, I want to know who this uh, is. Amtara. Amtara. Oh. He reminds me a bit of him. Big chestnut horse, and you know what I mean? He sort of just likes getting in trouble. I mean, will never be as good as Lamtara, probably, but he's got the same sort of profile going into the race, and I think he could run well. But once again, he's a bit like too darn hot. It's hard to back him now, isn't he, with, the, with Thursday coming along. Mm. Uh, those would be my two, and I didn't think Circus Maximus was that, unimpressive everyone told me he was that he, he didn't look that great but when i watched it again i thought he picked up again and i think he's all these horses of aidens that are coming out with their first run they are going to improve massively that's the difference between sir dragonette he'd had a run I'm not sure there's going to be a massive step up from his next run to the to, to the derby but all these other ones the circum max yeah. anthony van dyke they're all going to improve massively for a run so i mean any of them could could easily make up into the one okay darren any any big prices you want to just throw into the ring just, just one. Um, the talking horse from Godolphin all wall winter, Al Halali. Um, he was a very, he was actually supplemented for the Guineas pretty much last minute. He was minute. smashed for it, wasn't he? Just about to say, like that went really, that went fairly unnoticed. But on the show, he was punted from like twenties right down to eights. Now ran absolutely no race. He was beaten twenty five lengths since like second last or whatever it was. But the vibes coming from him all winter, like he he, he spent his winter in Dubai, and from you know. Rumours going around, he was absolutely tearing the place up out there uh, on the gallops out in Dubai, destroying everything that that, that was working alongside him. And he was duly supported pretty much all winter um, for, for, the, for the derby. And I think the Guineas is sort of like a last minute, just throw him in there because we're a desperate job. So, like, look, on form, he has what would look to be no chance, but he's just one that I gave a half a mention to uh, based on the interest that was shown in him earlier on the year. Okay, really quickly then, clarify your selections. What's he, a winner and a next best? I'll go for two darn hot and a massive price if they run him Norway. Okay, Darren? Mad Moon in Japan. Nice, I like that. And Tom? Uh, well, I'm, I've already nailed my colours to two darn hot and line of duty, but I am an Anthony Van Dyke fan after Saturday. Okay, lovely. Um, we'll take a quick break now before we cover the Oaks. Friends? Or maybe more. Earn a 20 quid free bet for every friend you refer to Paddy Power, thanks to our Friends with Benefits programme. Log in to your Paddy Power account and share your referral link to get started. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus, begambleaware.org. Welcome back to this Derby Festival anti-postcast then. It's Oaks time now. Uh, Let's run through the betting, Darren. Sure, yeah. So Aidan again tops the market here, Maddie. Uh, Pink Dogwood is 4-1 to for him. Ned Aie then is 92, but I should just say she needs to be supplemented for John Gosson. Uh, Hermosa is 7s, Maxad for William Haggis is 8s, Anna Perna is 10s, Iridesa is 12s, Happen is 14s, Just Wonderful is 14s, Tarnawa is 14s, and it is 16s bar. Okay, I am puzzled by this race. I really do not know what to think of it, but let's start off with the favourite pink dogwood then. Uh, Tom, we were just discussing in the break. Personally, I just don't get it. I, d- I don't think her form's all that. And I sort of, I want her to be a bit more impressive than she has been. Why was she only fifth in the Boosac last year? I just find it all a bit bizarre. What, what do you think? Not a fan, are you, Maddie? You're I not a fan. I just don't get it. I look, I'm with you. I don't get it on. Look, I lay my cards on the chest. I backed her to win the race after she won her Gower and Maiden at a, at a very big price. So I'm on her at a massive price to win the Oaks. So That's I, I mean, what's she now? <laughs> Four to one, did Darren I quite say. like her to win, but I'm with you. <laughs> I'm with you. I haven't, I haven't seen it at all. You can't go round on yeah, listen on form she's she's a, a, just like all the rest of them isn't she she's won a trial the third came out and won yesterday was it and you know it's it's okay form but she sort of scrambled home she was fifth in a group one as a two-year-old she won a maiden beaten twice she's the same as all those fillies mm. isn't she no she's in, you look it, at the horses Aidan O'Brien runs in the salsa bill stakes as well I mean you wouldn't have heard of half of them yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not a trends man, so I wouldn't be one to worry about where they go or what they do. I think I don't think Aiden, you know, at that, okay. you know, like the Derby horses, he wouldn't necessarily be worried about that. But for me, I think she's got an awful lot to prove, and unless you're on her at a big price, you just simply can't back her at four to one. Mm. She's she's just 
she's done no she's probably done less than half the others in the, in, in the, yeah. the top of the market yeah i'm gonna do my tom siegel spiel here and say well it's not that she can't win she could well win but i'm not back at four to one no, no thank you very much nick watts pink dogwood fan or not yeah, no, I'd, I'd, I'd be in the pro camp. Uh, again, it's all about price, and you know, I'd, I'd rather be on the price that Tom's on it than than what she is at the moment. But I think a lot of, will depend on whether Aiden runs her most. So if he if he doesn't, I mean, she would be the obvious one, having got classic form. Um, yeah. She's bred to stay a mile and a half. She's sister to Hydrangea, who won over a mile and a half uh, in Group One company. So she should get the trip. But if her most is kept to a mile, uh, an Irish One Thousand, those kind of races, it must be because they have got um, a, you know, a, a better middle distance prospect uh, amongst their fillies. And yeah, I mean, there's pros and cons to Pink Dogwood's form. She was beaten 10 lengths by Lady Care on her debut, which suggested she wasn't any, she wasn't brilliant, but you know, she made rapid progress and ended up in the Boussac, not, not very long, not very much further down the road. And she won her maiden very easily. Um, she won her comeback race probably more easily than the margin suggested. There's her third horse, Tanawa, who was mentioned in the betting for the Oaks, has come out and won the blue win since then. So there is a little bit of substance there. Um, you know, whether I want to get involved at the price she is at the moment, I'm not sure. But I think a few of these we'll, we'll get to. I'm not, I'm not sure. Max Sad was visually impressive. I'm not sure her trial race was up to much in terms of opposition. Um, if Hermosa comes out, then it, it starts to be a bit of a gap in the market between Pink Dogwood and and the rest of them. Yeah, Darren, I know you're a, a bit of a fan. What, what's so great about this pink dogwood? What am I not seeing? Yeah, I, look, on, on paper and on visual, it's like, yeah, you, you are dead right. There's probably not a whole pile to her, though. I do there. I, I would agree with Nick there. That I think that's very astute. The way she won her, her race in Nav, and she won it a lot handier maybe than it might immediately have appeared. Mm. Ryan didn't take the stick out. He was probably slow enough to get her going and really just kept her interested. Because I don't think she's going, she's going to be one that does a whole pile when she hits the front. But I can say the, the, the vibes coming off her are scary. Like, it's it, this is sort of best we've ever seen job. Like, I know we hear that from Aiden every year, but um, there are just there's a few whispers going around about it that she's the second coming, and, you know, they've not seen too much like her before. So, look, as with all things... It's, Aiden, it's getting good for me, Darren. Huh? This is getting good now. When we're on a I, big price, I've not seen that. But if they're telling her the second coming, hooray! Yeah, I, I don't know, just as a few whispers going around the place about how good she is. I mean, she's been very, very well backed all winter in spite of the fact that other fillies in the race would have twice the form she has, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, look, I definitely wouldn't back her at 4-1. to one. If you're on at 50s, I'll shake her hand for a play to you. It wouldn't be for me to back her at 4s. She could well go and win, but I will be looking elsewhere. Okay, um, let's let's look elsewhere then. John Gosden, he's got a handful in here. Medea, who won the Cheshire Oaks, the Enable route. I thought she got herself out of trouble really well there, won really impressively, but her profile, Watsy, beforehand just screamed to me that she just a bit of a weird one, that she wasn't really good enough, but she seems to have just took a massive leap forward. Yes, yeah, it can happen, can't it? Um, we've been talking about it with Aidan O'Brien horses, but it can also happen to, to you know, to other yards as well. Uh, you know, she's obviously very well bred by Frankel. Um, you know, obviously got the gets the trip very well. Um, I, I do wonder about some of the Chester trials last last week. And, you know, the the ground was particularly testing, um, and it's very unusual that we would get you know that soft at Epsom. We'd have to have some massive downpours, you know, mm. over the two days for it to get just a very quick draining track. Um, they never let it get too quick though, do they? These days, I know no, there's a lot there. This no, it wouldn't people be. People aren't worried to run about run it, on it at it all. It wouldn't be rattling fast, and you know, if I was connections, I'd definitely roll the dice and, and enter her. I, th I think you have to after a performance like that, and you know, in a, in an open looking contest where it's four to one the field. You know, I, th I think you know, it's not like John Gosden's got you know huge amounts of runners to to have a go at in that like yeah. like Aidan O'Brien would have so when you've got one that's there's won a trial and and connections are willing to stump up then I think you would you would definitely have a go yeah why not yeah. Darren what do you make of that chest of form do you think uh the horse that finished second I mean they they seem to like her a lot beforehand yeah I think uh Meda you got an absolute master class of a ride from Rav Havlin and I think she's the beneficiary of circumstance once again. The place to be in Chester that day was coming down the outside turning for home. Obviously, you don't want to be losing ground being outside the whole way. But when you're just turning for home, you need to come down, you know, the, the golden highway as opposed to getting stuck up the rail in the sludge. I've watched this back five or six times. Uh, Fanny Logan was trapped in the inside. Manuela de Vega was trapped in the inside. Ameda E was kind of third of three, if you get me, on the right hand side and just pulled out at the right time and kicked and was gone before the other two fillies could get their get their skates under them. 
they were trapped on the sludge and at the rail. For me, yeah, look, she won, she was good. Would I back her for it? One? No. If I owned her, would I stump up to supplement her? Almost certainly not either. I don't think she's good enough. Um, I would be more interested in Manuela de Vega. Um, I'd say she's a lot better than what she got a chance to show with Chester. But Medi, definitely not for me, to be honest. Yeah, I know Harry Bentley. He was very pleased with Manuel- Manuela de Vega's run. Uh, Tom Medi? Uh, I would never be as negative about a John Goldston filly that wins its trial by five lengths. If it would be an Aidan O'Brien, I think she'd be five to two. Nine to four and a half, which is, I get all that Darren says, but I thought she was massive, massively impressive. Uh, her figures in, when she was a two year old were really good too. Uh, why she's not entered is a bit of a big question because normally they throw in all those fillies, but uh, I think she's got a solid chance. Yeah, on what she showed at Chester, I didn't see anything wrong with that at all. Okay, whilst we're on the topic of John Gostin trained fillies, what about Anna Perna, who was really impressive in the Linkfield yeah, trial? Her, I got the opinion. Very much. The horses in behind probably weren't all that great, but I mean, she did what she did, didn't she? I think that's the Maddie. We can't when we talk about trials, we always say that, don't we? Who? What did mm. she beat? What did she do? Well, you can't. You can only beat what's set and put in front yeah, of you, and she exactly. beat them by miles, didn't she? And she's a, clearly a strong stayer. When I did this a few weeks ago, we asked John Gosden who is Oaks Philly was. He didn't mention Medayi or whatever it's called or Annapurna, and the one he came to straight away was Sparkle Roll. Yes. That was the one that yeah. he thought was his 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 bet his Oaks filly, the uh, Kingman filly that won at Sandown yeah. under a penalty, a novice stakes. You're going to talk about horse I like in a minute. <laughs> yeah, I'll talk about him in a minute, her in a minute. I'm not a bit worried about her, Maddie. I'll we'll, we'll get to there in a time. But uh, I thought that was interesting that he didn't mention. What the point is that he's got loads of fillies, isn't he? He's got yeah. loads of good ones. So if Sparkle Roll comes out and wins the Musidora, maybe she's the one. But. Uh, I think when you when you, they always say if you've got four or five, you probably haven't got one really good one. But we mm. don't know that, and, and we'll see what happens on uh, in the Musidora. But uh, I think those Goston fillies, they've won their trials and they've won them a long way. I don't think you can rule them out by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah, I know. Is she Murphy's a big Sparkle Roll fan? She's a great big grey filly. We'll see how she does at York this week. Um, Darren, we were talking about Hamosa before. You don't think they're going to run her in this race? Why? No, I'd say unlikely. Now, just again, the vibes coming off the O'Brien camp where they were going to kind of keep her to a mile and um, go to the Irish Guineas. The, the stiff mile at the at, at the Curra, I think, would suit her perfectly. Um, I think probably, again, based on the fact that they have Pink Dog Wood here, they're, they're quite content to, uh, to to leave her as their main one in the race and, and let her mostly go and pick up another Guineas, um, which just shows you, again, the confidence they have in this Pink Dog Wood. Mm. Um, I liked her run at Newmarket. thought it was good. She had some instant back form as well. Like I'm a huge fan of that royal meeting that she was um, second to in the Criterium International last October. I think he, he's due to reappear at Royal Ascot. Uh, I don't know whether she'd get a mile and a half. And I think, to be honest with you, if there's a handy guineas to be picked up there at the car, I'd be more inclined to go and take that than see okay. if she'd stay there. On pedigree, she certainly would. But anyway, we'll move on to Maxad. A lot of people uh, plunged for her after the Guineas winning the pretty Polly Watsy. Again, I'm going to be sounding a bit negative here, but I think the race fell apart behind, but she was still impressive. It, it depends which way you look at it. You, you, you could look at it on a slightly negative I'm just slant. A and, aren't yeah, I? And, and, and say, well, she didn't beat a lot, but you, you had to be impressed by it. I think any, any race when you see a horse travel like that, travel into the race and traveling all over them, um, She's obviously in a different class to the filly she was against there. Um, and that's what you want to see them do. You want to see them travel like that. You know, as, as an owner and a trainer, that's, that, that's, that's what you're after. And, you know, uh, she put distance between herself and, and, and the others. Um, she did it very easily, wouldn't have taken anything out of herself. I think she'll probably stay. Um, yeah, she's a definite player. And yeah, you can, you can crab what she beat, but as, as Tom alluded to, you can't beat the way that she did it. Mm. Yeah, Tom, Max, what was your analysis of her run? Would you have, I mean, there was a lot of sort of talk of her and Hermosa, which one would you prefer? Maybe Darren said Hermosa's not going to go now, but, but Max, would, would you have had her ahead of Hermosa? No, no, won't no. stay, won't run. Okay. Okay, That's my simple as that. I just don't think she's got any chance to stay in the trip. I think Ham- Hamdan now Maktoum is very keen on his pedigrees. He'll spot it. She'll run in the Allery or the French French Oaks for me. Yeah. I think that's that's the that's way she'll the, go the, with him. The trainer sounded like, didn't it? I mean, yeah. Tristan Shake, she's a good filly who's, who's boosted that form. But uh, anyway, let's continue through them then. Just wonderful. She ran quite an eye-catching race. Uh, Tom, you're not, not keen on this one. No, don't like her. Hard ride. Not sure she'll stay either. So she, wouldn't, she wasn't anywhere near anything I, I thought of, no. Okay, who else do we want to mention then? Any at big prices, what's thing? What happened is quite interesting, uh, well, vaguely interesting, because if, if Pink Dogwood is the one, then she might even run. And 
You know, it's, it's, it, she's been campaigned in a strange way because she's, she's run over six and seven furlongs exclusively, yet she's a daughter of Alexandrova, who was a dual um, Oaks winning filly herself. So um, it's a real mix of pedigree by war front out of Alexandrova. Um, there might well be huge improvements come when she goes up in trip. Um, well, she might take more after her sire and, you know, be happy at like, seven furlongs in a mile. But she would be interesting if she was in the race. I do take Darren's point about Manuela de Vega. I do really agree with him on that. She was one of those that was stuck on the inside in that Chester race or, or chose to, to, to stay that side. And if you stop the race rounding the home turn, she was going equally as well as the John Gosden yeah. filly. Um, she got out and beat her side, but obviously Medai's side was the, was the correct one to be. But Ralph Beckett, very interesting afterwards, said it didn't put him off going for the Oaks at all with Manuela de Vega. He knows what it takes. He's won the race a few times before. Very good with Phillies and um, wasn't displeased with a run one iota. So I think she's still hanging out there at a decent price. Um, and there was a huge amount to take from that for me. Yeah. Um, Tom, let's get on to this filly that I know you've tipped up previously and I'm a big fan of. I mean, how you can back a horse for the Oaks at about 16 to 1 when she's finished fourth in a Sandown Maiden is just bizarre. But I was just so, so taken <laughs> by this sea of faith. No, I'm all about me because I, I backed her. And I was thinking, I must be mad, but I just couldn't get away from the fact that I, I was just so impressed. Hello, Maddie. Betting, as you know, and as you've proved there, it's all about timing, isn't it? At the time, she looked like a very interesting filly. She's a Steve the Stars filly, loves Steve the Stars fillies, Togruda, Sea of Class. You know, they're two of the best fillies we've great seen. Great pedigree, in, yeah. isn't she? Related to sort of Raheen House, Shro, yeah. who she, won she'll, an she'll stay. One. She'll stay, that's for sure. The, the question is, we, we don't know how good she is, but before the trials, we didn't know any good of them. You know, Pink mm. Dogwood, we still don't know how good she is. We don't know any how good any of them are. You know, when you're backing, you know, you, Anna Perna now is 7-1, to one, and she would won a Link, uh, Kempton Maiden before before Saturday. So when you're doing anti-post betting, you've got to take risks. At the time, she looked a very interesting filly, didn't she, at Sandown? She missed the mm. break by 20 lengths. She was in the right hands. William Haggis is talking. Run on Saturday well, in that's the plan. Yeah, we'll we'll see. I mean, I know she's very very weak on the exchanges at the moment for the for the for the Oaks. She's out to a big price, oh you know, dear. 40, 40 <laughs> odd to one. So maybe she's not going to turn up there, and she'll have to win, and she'll have to run to to you know win quite well for I think William Haggis to run her. I think he's more inclined to run Frank Alina, who's running in the Musa Dora mm. in this week. I think he might think she's the Oaks filly, but she's an interesting one. If she was to come out and win at Newbury. In, That's in the a, thing, isn't yeah. it? If she did if she win did impressively, she'd be half the price. She, she would be nearly favourite. Yeah. She'd be nearly favourite because she did shape with any amount of problems. The other one I like, I thought the most impressive maiden winner I've seen this season in, in Britain, not Ireland, to make that clear, was Lavender's Blue, Amanda Perrett's horse at Newmarket. She's another Steve the Stars filly out of a Group 2 winner. When are we going to see her? She's <laughs> due to run at Newbury on Saturday as well. Ah, OK. She's due to take on Sea of Faith as well. I think she's really, really good. I think she. I, I just really love the way she travelled and knuckled down to her, to the way you know the way she moved through the final furl. I think she's really good. Like all of these, when I did it, any of them could have been the one because we just didn't know. Uh, and I still think we won't know come the come Oaks Day. But at the moment, I'm still holding out that hope that Lavender's Blue is as classy as I think she was when she won at Newmarket. Tom, it's all it's all aligning for you because she's running on Saturday, owned by Benny Anderson, and of course um, Saturday evening we'll all be glued to the Eurovision Song Contest. Uh, you'll be glued to it, Nick. You'll be glued <laughs> to it. Clearly, I'll be—I don't know—doing anything less boring instead, as they used to oh, say. I'm with you, Tom. I'm <laughs> well, my wife, my, my wife will be watching that. Right, Darren. We'll let you get a word in edgeways. Then some other fillies that you think could run well. I know you're a big pink dogwood fan, but if I forced you to, who would you be looking at at a big price? I wish you'd come to me before Tom. He's uh, he's after taking the the very very two that I that I fancy day. I back see a faith and like yourself back. Oh, you've made out. me feel like much less of an idiot now. So thank you very much. No, <laughs> no. If you got if you got your forties, I'd say you're you're happy enough. Um, like I am starting to get slightly concerned as well. She again, she reminds me of um of the filly last year. The the what was the sea of uh, sea class. class? Yeah, yeah. Whereby you know she's probably well good enough to run in this, but is she going to be there on time? Mm. Um, and that's what's starting to like, like we're only three weeks away do you know what I mean she really yeah. needs to be out again I'm glad to hear she's running Saturday I actually wasn't aware of that uh, she she really needs to be winning and winning well to, to rock up here because William Haggis will take his time with her and then the other one yeah was just Lavender's Blue um, like for me she's achieved as much in that maiden win as a lot of these that are shorter for one of Amanda Paris to go off 3-1 to one and win first time out 
is bananas. Like she punted punted off the boards the night before and on the morning of and on the show as well, and really did like knuckle down one. Um, and is one again bred for a trip. So she should be fine. After that, then like I don't think the Phillies this year are a great bunch. I give just wonderful a more positive mention than Todd did. Like. I thought if Ryan Moore could have his time again, his riding the guineas wasn't brilliant. For all, I do think she probably is a small bit tricky. Um, I know they're very fond of her back in Aiden. I think she could be a bit of a morning glory, maybe. But um, they'd be just the three. But I, th- there's the depth isn't there. The, there mightn't be a whole pile of depth to the Colts. Definitely isn't a whole pile of depth to the Phillies. I don't think any of them are any good. Mm, OK, hence why I've tried to sort of hopefully see if Faith will... Uh run really impressively on Saturday, but who knows, maybe I'm clutching at straws. Uh, let's clarify the best bets then. Uh, Tom, I'll go to you first this time. I've packed Lavender's Blue. She's my one. She's my one, definitely. I've packed her at 33 to 1. I hope she comes out at uh, Newbury on Saturday and shows me, shows everyone what I, how good I think she really is. Just cut to me running out of the studio, going on to uh, odds checker. Yeah, what price is Lavender's Blue? Uh, what's he? I have an each way bet on uh, Ralph Beckett's Manuela de Vega. I like that. So we're, we're definitely much going under the radar a bit here. Uh, and Darren, finally. The, the only one I back is Sea of Faith, and that's, that's where my, uh, my, I'll be sticking in that camp between now and then. Yeah, sounds like you're on at a bigger price than me. Um, anyway, before we leave you, let's have a quick chat about the other races at the uh, Epsom Festival. The Coronation Cup is shaping up to be a cracker, and Abel's due to return there. We could see Magical and Kew Gardens, Vold Guy, Stradivarius is even in the markets there. I don't think he'll be running, but that would be very interesting if he was. Is an Abel vulnerable this season, Nick Watts? Um, when we first mentioned the Coronation Cup, Kew Gardens was the horse that sprung to my mind because he's had the benefit of a run at Chester now. Hated that ground, didn't he? Yeah, it wouldn't, you know, as, as we say all the time, it's a long old season for Aiden's horses and he brings them on and brings them on. So, you know, I doubt he would have been absolutely cherry ripe for, for that return. Um, you know, obviously it got better as the season went along last year. And, yeah, I'd be very interested in him at... Uh, for the Coronation Cup. I haven't heard much about Enable lately. I presume it's, uh, it's the starting point for her, but I haven't seen her much in the news recently, so I'm not sure what her current well-being is. I'm sure everything's fine, but um, yeah, I've seen Kew Gardens recently. I was, I was happy enough with that comeback, so I, I, I would probably row in with him. Okay. Tom, do you think Enable could be vulnerable this season? Uh, I, well, later on, I don't know. Yeah, of course she could. I mean, she would definitely be vulnerable in, in this race, I think, first time up. I love Val guys for this. I think okay. he's a really, really top horse. I've always thought it. Uh, I Beat thought that he, gayest, didn't he, that had it, the, the buzz yeah, horse. Yeah, I thought he was a be- He looked better than ever, I thought. I think he needs fast ground. That's the key to him. I thought he was really unlucky in the arc. I think uh, Andre Farber always, if he runs one in here, they, they nearly always go well. I think he's a better horse than Kew Gardens. I think he'll, I think he'll give them all everything they can think of and more in, in the Coronation Cup. And what of Magical? Yeah, she's there. good too. She's very good too. Yeah, I, I think she would be my second best in. I'd have them to over enable for the for Coronation Cup just at this stage, just because they've had runs and she hasn't. Okay, Darren, uh, shaping up to be a cracker. Any thoughts on the Coronation Cup? Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't think enable is going to be overly vulnerable. Now, to be honest, with you. I think she's class. She honestly, really, like, I look ahead. There's nothing I can say that hasn't already been said. Just an interesting one on magical. I think the arc is her ultimate aim this year, and I reckon she's going to be. Um, campaign very similar to how founders campaign the year she won the arc so she's going to be quite busy the early part of the year and then take a couple of months off in june come back in august mm. did they run. say that she could get to the tattersall's gold cup next didn't they yes they did indeed yeah they did indeed so i i, I think you'll see lots of her because just as nick said there it's a long early year for aiden's horses but she's going to be camp i think she's one that, that you know she thrives on her race and so they're going to keep her busy early doors Small little break then in the middle of the summer and then the arc being the ultimate aim. Is she good enough to be enabled? If they're both their best, probably not, no. Yeah, before we get a quick word on one of the other races, um, just Stradivarius, I mean, we're going to see him at York again. What a week it's going to be. Would you fancy him back down to a mile and a half? Do you think he could compete, Darren? No. I'd be disappointed if he could. Uh, nothing against the horse. Like he's class, but he's class over two miles, mile six, etc., etc. If he's good enough to beat these over a mile and a half, the sport is in serious bother. I'll put it that way. <laughs> Tom, would you agree? Yeah, uh, these we're talking about some of the best horses, not of any year, of, you know, of, of the decade. You know, enables yeah. and you know they're proper, proper mile and a half. I'd be surprised if he could beat them. He could win. A, he could pick up a, a rubbish group one over a mile and a half. No problem, yeah. But against Enables and Vault Guys and Magicals, I don't give him a chance, no. Okay, and obviously we don't have any anti-post betting for the Epsom Dash just yet. But I wanted to get your guys' approach to it because it's one of the most sort of exciting races of the season. 
one of the fastest five furlong races uh, we'll ever see. I mean, have you, how do you go about finding the winner of this race, Watsy? My approach is normally to avoid it. <laughs> <laughs> Get myself a nice ploughman and sit down and watch <laughs> and wait for the derby and then just see what happens. Um, no, I mean, it's, uh, it's a great visual spectacle. I mean, they're, they're going hell for leather. One of the fastest, you know, track, five furlong tracks in, in the country is, is superb. Um, I did actually pluck one out. Uh, you are joking. I saw no, the look, I of, I saw I look of bewilderment on your please face as I turned to you. Please with don't this. say that Tim Easterby horse, whatever you No, do. no, no, no. I've, I've finally scrubbed him off the... Uh, <laughs> I, I haven't Burke. even heard. I, I think he's in a field somewhere in, in, enjoying, some, your uh, enjoying some grass. Yeah, he could be. But no, um, there was one ho horse on my radar for this. Uh, it's a horse uh, David Griffiths trains called Ornate, um, who... Has been a good horse in the past uh, for William Haggis and Robert Kell, um, and he's gone to David Griffiths, I think, back in the last year or this year. He's done very well. Won a five furlong handicap at Newmarket two starts ago. Uh, ran well behind Mab's Cross in the in the Palace House last time at Newmarket. Finished fifth. He's one of those horses that's really quick from the gates, and that's what won him the race at Newmarket, and that's what pricked my interest for this race because if he's well drawn and can get a good slot, you know, out of the gates and and get moving early. Um, there's always traffic problems in this race uh, in behind, so he could be in the best place. And if he goes for the race, then I'd be interested in him. Um, but that's uh, that's my only take. I'm surprised as anyone that we've managed to get a selection out of that. <laughs> that <was> impressive, <laughs> Watsy. Well done. I have, I have prices here for this, if this one. Oh, really? Go, uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, uh, prices for the Coronation Cup as well. I probably should have said that at the time. But uh, yeah, prices for the dash here. So Leody's Dream then is fives. Hathik is tens. Muthmir is tens. Tanisak is 10s, Dark Shot is 12s, Just That Lord is 12s, Kick On, Kick On is 12s, Cowboy Soldiers 14s, Mokotil is 14s, and we are 16s bar. Brilliant, thanks Darren. Um, I'm a big fan of that Leoda stream. I think he could be a group class sprint. I've really, been really impressed in this season. Tom, any thoughts on the dash? Uh, Love-hate relationship for me, Maddie. Every <laughs> Winners of this Every year we bang on about the draw in these sprint handicaps. I think if you go through the last few winners, it's been trap 16, trap 1, trap 17, trap 1, trap 14, trap 19, trap 2. So everyone says you need a high draw. As soon as I say you need a high draw, trap 1 wins. As soon as I say don't worry about the draw, trap <laughs> 17 wins. It's one of those races that just flummoxes me every year. As I say, 16-1, 17-1. You know, it seems to me that... You, Everyone says you need a high draw and you don't. And when you do need it, you don't. I don't know. It's too confusing. But the horse I like is Tanner Sock. I thought he won it really easily last year. He did, didn't he? I'm a uh, big fan of him. I yeah. think I backed him last year, actually. Oh, well done. I don't well know done. how I managed that. Anyway, go on. Anyway, and I thought he was better than ever. I thought he came back and looked better than ever when he won at uh, Musselburgh at the start of the season. Yeah. He's now rated 98. I think when he won it last year, he was rated about 90-ish. I oh, know he was rated 83. He was a bit lower in the, a bit lower, heart of stone lower in the handicap. I think he deserves it, and I think he'll run well again. Okay. Uh, and Darren? Uh, the thoughts of having a bet in this race at this stage makes me feel unwell. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, and before we leave, just really quickly do us a favour and run us through that Coronation Cup betting as well. We will, will, of course, two seconds there. So, yeah, so Enable is four to five favourite. Q Gardens is fives. Magical is fives. Walgeist is eights. Lati Dar is tens. Mirando's 14s, Salouen is 14s, Stradivarius is 14s, and we are 16s bar. Brilliant. Yeah, Lati Dart, another horse who's going to run this week. Thanks very much, Darren. There's the betting for you if you want to bet in that race. That'll do us for today's show. It's been a great long old slog, but it's been fabulous fun. Uh, thanks for joining us. Please make sure you rate, review, and subscribe as always. And we'll see you soon. Check out Paddy's Rewards Club. Simply place five bets of £10 or more across any sport in a week and you'll get a free £10 bet then next week. TNC Supply 80 plus,